So I don't know about you, um, but Sunday hit me hard. Uh, and it's, it's not often that we come in on Saturday and we talk about the, what was talked about on Sunday. But there, there have been certain times in the past several years when we've been doing this that some principle was brought up on Sunday morning that was so important and it, at least it affected me so significantly that when I walked out of there I said we've got to talk about this we've got to explore this deeper we can't let this this one message pass us by <coughs> and so Jeremy started off with uh, a statement on su uh, Sunday morning it said each of us will leave a mark intentionally or unintentionally a big one or a small one and it'll either be for good or for bad and I, I don't know about you but I, I spent my entire week thinking all right what what is what is that mark that I've left what is that mark that people have left on me for me, the most significant mark that was left on me, many of you have heard it before, but it was my mother's death. It was the, the process that the church and the leaders led us to believe that if we had enough faith, it didn't matter what God's will was, if we had enough faith, then he would heal her. And that mark permanently, permanently, for the longest time, scarred me skewed my view about who God was because I felt like he just didn't care. It, it changed and altered my life so significantly. That was a huge, huge mark. And I don't think it was intentional that they did this, but I think that's the way it ended up being. And, and then Jeremy made the statement, you won't know the extent of the mark that you're making until a long time has passes, a long time passes. And I thought, what kind of marks have I made? And, and it, it's really quite interesting. Uh, in 19, 1976, when I was 16 years old, I know, <laughs> some of you guys weren't married, I, even, even born at that point. <laughs> in 1976, when I was 16 years old, I started working for Revco, which is now the CVS. All right. At 18 years old, I was, the, I was a manager there. I was making, in 1978, I was making $21,000 a year, which in, at that point in time was a lot of money for somebody who was going to college full-time and also managing a drugstore. <laughs> so anyway, the, the people, I had about 20 people that worked for me at the age of 18, most of which were older, and I, when I was preparing for this, it came to my mind, this was the mark I made. They gave me this, and I don't know how I ended up keeping it, but it's called The Gospel According to Steve. <laughs> All, right. All right. These were the rules of working for me back in, in 1978. All right. It, it, I'm just going to read a couple of them. It says, Thou shalt remember everything I say and not make me repeat myself when I explain how to do something. Thou shalt always ask me how my day is going. Thou shalt not leave a mess, but pick up after mine. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but that, you know, I was already pretty much set at 18, because if you ask my wife, <laughs> all right. Um, thou shalt have no other political opinions other than those which I choose. <laughs> I know, it's hard to believe I was that way at 18, isn't it? <laughs> Thou shalt help me censor all literature coming into the store. Thou shalt remember, humanity is not important as long as the war is won. Yeah, wow. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not say bad words when I knock you unconscious while unloading the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I was zealous in everything I did, okay? Finally, last but not least, thou shalt do as I say and not as I do. Wow. 18 years old. That was the mark that I made on those people. Not necessarily good. 
And I thought, you know, as I as I became an attorney, you know, the the goal the goals as an attorney is to to make a name for yourself, to to put yourself at that level. You're you're always talking about yourself because you've you've got to convince everybody else that you're as good as you want everybody to believe that you are. And I've always been good at that. All right, that's one of the gifts that God. Well, I guess God gave me that is to be able to always portray myself as knowing more, being better than everybody else. And I always utilize that to the fullest. And so as an attorney, one of those goals in life is to get to, you know, the, the U.S. Court of Appeals, of which there are only 11 courts in the entire nation, or to the Supreme Court. And two years ago, I finally got there. And here is the, here is the evidence of that. It is the published opinion of the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. All right. I am now published in the annals. My name is in the same books that Thomas Jefferson was in back in the 1800s. <coughs> and here it is. It's, it's the Donnie Ray Ennis versus Green Tree Servicing. And on the second page, Stephen E. Dunn, Forest, Virginia, for the appellant. And I thought, man, I made a mark. But not really. And I thought about all of those things that I've done my entire life. The mark that I made on my kids when I walked out of the house and I said, I want a divorce. And Michael was five and Michelle was two. Because it wasn't about the family anymore. It wasn't about the kids. It, it was really all about what I wanted to do. It, it wasn't important. The scars and the marks that I made. And I think about the, the marks that I made on my wife, Tracy, when we first got married because it was still all about me. And as long as, long as Stephen was happy, then everybody was happy. But if Stephen wasn't happy, there was just hell to pay. That was me. That was me then. <coughs> And up until about four years ago, that was me my entire life. The things that they said about me at age 18, I was pretty much that way my entire life. I was always right. I was never wrong. Right? Even when I made wrong decisions, I was always right. It was somebody else's fault. And so I spent my entire life trying to make my mark. And Jeremy went over four questions on Sunday. He asked, what kind of mark am I making on my family? Did, did you think about those questions as he asked them? What kind of mark are you making on your family? <coughs> Second question he answer, asked, what kind of mark am I making on my friends, my coworkers, my neighbors? Third question he asked, what kind of mark am I making on my church Fourth question he asked, what kind of mark am I leaving when no one else is around? And I don't know about you, but I, I, I watched both, ser I, I, went through, I sat through both services on Sunday, and it, both services, man, it took me to, at some, at some points in time, such a bad place. Because I realized that most of my marks in my life had been nothing but bad. 